We want to welcome you this morning to North Citrus Christian Church. And if you're tuning in for us uh, online, we want to let you know that today is a very special ordination service. So this is something that you may have never seen before in your lifetime, and quite honestly, may never see again. Uh, so this is an opportunity for everybody to be a part of a special ordination service for uh, Nathan Beard, uh, who is here today, a recent graduate from Johnson University, Florida. And he is uh, dedicating his life to full-time Christian service, and uh, it'll be an exciting time. So we are glad that you are here this morning uh, to join us in this special occasion. And no matter what day it is, and the good news is it's a beautiful day outside here in Florida, but this is the day that what? And we will rejoice and be glad in it. So now that you've said it, let's sing it. So let's all be standing and let's sing together. This is the day that the Lord hath made. So whatever works, you can just wave to those that are not ready. Okay, so it all works. So if you need a hug, put your hand out. Another hugger will come get you. A handshake. Good morning, or good morning sir. Okay, good. Good morning. All right, you get all those in? Okay, you may go ahead and take a seat where you're at. All right, we want to uh, again welcome you here to uh, North uh, Citrus Christian Church, and thank you for everyone who is here for our special type of service that we have called in-person worship. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not. Uh, but this is our in-person worship service. We also have uh, available uh, out in the parking lot on uh, 87.9 FM. Uh, we have folks out there listening today uh, that are taking in the service out there. So we are grateful and, and glad that you are out there. And then additionally, it is being taped online that will be placed on the church's Facebook page uh, later today. So that will also be available if you have friends or family that have been unable to be here this morning. Uh, that opportunity will be to watch that as well. If you are visiting with us, perhaps for the first time, or it's been a while since you've been back, please fill out a welcome card, if you would, please. Uh, this is an opportunity for us to get some of your contact information, and just so we can kind of follow up and be a support, because we want to see you again. Uh, it's also an opportunity for regular attenders and members. If you have any suggestions, comments, prayer requests, that's a good place to put that uh, on the card as well. So there's an opportunity to do that. Once you fill those out, there are boxes on either side of the auditorium in the back and one in the back uh, where you can put those cards. This is also where our regular attenders and members uh, put offerings. Uh, so we do not uh, pass a collection plate. 
here at North Citrus, but we certainly have those offering of boxes available for you uh, to remember your tithes and offerings. <coughs> also keep in mind, we are in the process of kind of uh, upgrading our uh, equipment as far as being able to uh, do services online and working with uh, social media outlets such as YouTube and Facebook. And so we're in the process of raising funds for a, for a camera that will be mounted in the back that will give us the opportunity to uh, do some live streaming uh, out there to uh, our community as well. So if you want to give towards that, simply just make a notation of a camera fund on your giving, and then that will go towards that as well. Does anybody know what next week is, next Sunday? That's right, it's Father's Day, so it's just around the corner. I want to encourage all men out there uh, to come and show up and bring your families with you. And uh, perhaps you're watching at home and you haven't been back to church since this whole crisis hit. This is an opportunity to step back in and to be a part of a special service next Sunday on Father's Day. So that will be a special part as well. In addition to that, we are also following our Core 52 series. And we will be looking on the 28th at a special section on prayer. So mark that down on your calendar. And then I want to give you a preview for something coming up the first Sunday in July. What is something that we do here at North Citrus Church usually the first Sunday of the month? Potluck! Potluck <laughs> fellowship, okay. With it being July, we're going to do somewhat of a barbecue and cookout, and we're going to give you some more details on that. Okay, We're taking some steps to make sure everybody's safe, some common sense precautions along the way, uh, but we are glad uh, that we're going to be doing that again July 5th. So that's going to be 4th of July weekend, so you can look forward to that coming up just around the corner. One other uh, uh, prayer concern that we want to keep in mind is we are looking to expand and to get some new folks involved with our worship team. So if you have some, uh, some talent in that area, as far as instruments or vocals, or you want to be a part of that, please uh, see me. Uh, we're in the process of trying to step that up a little bit and, and get others involved. So we encourage you to uh, look at that. Or if you know of someone uh, that you's like, you know, our church is looking for, uh, for some folks uh, for the worship team. And so we uh, usually have our, our, our drummer up here, but unfortunately, we had a little wasp sting this morning. And so Kurt is okay, but he's taking care of himself. Well, we refer to him as Little Drummer Boy, um, but he's not little by any stretch. He's very muscular, and, but we are thinking of Kurt this morning. It, I have checked with him. He is doing fine, but just has to help with the, uh, the wasp sting and everything with that. But uh, we will be back up and running before too long. All right, so we are glad that you are here, and we're going to go ahead and get started uh, with uh, a prayer uh, to get started into uh, our worship time this morning. Father God, thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you for everybody within the sound of my voice. But Lord, I truly believe that this day is not just for young man, Nathan Beard. But Lord, this day is meant for everybody who is watching online. This day is meant for everybody who is in the parking lot, everybody who is here and within the doors of the, the church building. Lord, I think this is a day that is, can be inspiring to all of us as we bring you glory through your son, Jesus Christ, and with the guidance and direction of the Holy Spirit. Father, we do pray that you continue to watch over our community, continue to watch over uh, our nation, Continue to watch over our world as we're involved in kind of multiple crisis as we speak. And Lord, I just pray that you just continue to give us direction as we turn our eyes upon Jesus. And as we find our way forward and as we be a light in a dark world. Father, just give us direction, give us hope, give us courage and strength. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to go into our first uh, worship song today, simply entitled, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
song today we're going to use uh, the same power it's the same power that rose Jesus from the grave that lives in us mm -hmm. uh, for our communion this morning if uh, you're here for the first time it's going to give you an idea how this works it is certainly open uh, to all believers in Christ and we encourage you to uh, partake along with us uh, we simply have uh, grape juice that represents the uh, blood of Christ and the uh, bread which represents his body uh, we'll have men uh, with masks and gloves coming around, uh, passing. We have a little double cup method, so you don't have to touch the communion tray. All you're going to do is just pick up two cups that are together. The juice will be on the top, and then the bread will be in the cup below it. So just pick up the cup as it's brought to you, and then at your convenience, as you take your time to meditate and pray, uh, then you can take of uh, the bread and cup uh, during the communion time. So let's sing together uh, this beautiful, uh, beautiful communion song uh, entitled Same Power.
George Plants, our senior minister, will be bringing our communion meditation. For those of you who don't know me, I am the senior senior minister. <laughs> it, it works that way if you stick around long enough. Now this is a very special morning. A day in which one of our own will be formally commissioned as an ambassador of the living Christ. And so Nathan is to be set apart, appointed, to the office of Christian minister. And Nathan, we wish you well in that. Uh, there are others in this room who also uh, perhaps have been ordained. Uh, I don't know uh, who you are other than Jonathan and myself, but, but it's quite possible. Um, and for all of us, we would re really not want to be known as a priest, and yet we perform many of the functions of a priest, and that is what you will be doing, Nathan, as you minister to God's people under the new covenant, and you're aware of all this. Uh, so if we think about Someone from the college? Is there someone from the college here that's been ordained? Anyone? Joe Anyone? Caputo. Hmm? George? I'm sorry? Joe Caputo, the preaching minister at Christian Church in the Wildwood, is with us today. Wonderful, wonderful. Great. Uh, and, uh, and there may be someone here from another church that's been ordained. And you may think that I've covered all the bases with that, but... Uh, not really. There are yet others, and it may surprise you who is in this room that uh, is to administer to the office of a priest or have priestly duties. Listen as I read from 1 Peter 2, 4. Come to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple, he was rejected by the people, but he is precious to God who chose him. Now I want you to pay particular attention to verse 5. And now God is building you, you as living stones into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are God's holy priests. That's what it reads. I'm not making it up. You are God's holy priests who offer the spiritual sacrifices that please him because of Jesus Christ. No, you have not been formally set apart to the office of Christian minister, but you have been set apart as people who belong to God, and as such, I hope it does not surprise you to learn that God expects you to have a personal ministry of your own. We were not saved just for us, yep. but we were saved for the cause of Christ. Mm -hmm. And we are to reach out to others and do all that we can. And should you be thinking that you're too far gone to do very much, you might ask yourself this question. Do I still have enough energy and intelligence and heart to pray for others in intercessory prayer? Certainly, we all do. So my advice for all of us, including myself, is to think this over as we prepare our hearts for communion. Now pray with me. And Lord God, yes, to think that we're saved for ourselves is certainly a selfish thought. Let that not be the case with anyone here, Father. Make us painfully aware, if it need be, that we are to be 
also ambassadors of the living Christ. Mm -hmm. That we have been commissioned, that we have been appointed, that we have been set apart. And we thank you for that as we take this bread and cup. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We prepare for a time of ordination. Um, we want to sing the song, Turn Your Eyes on Jesus. It's help set our hearts and minds uh, towards the purpose for which we've gathered today.
and Sharon and Crystal for being part of the worship, and of course, Brent and Rachel in the back to make that all happen on the screen. We appreciate you and being part of this special time. As we have, uh, yes, by all means, thank you. Thank you a lot of time and effort. As we have approached this time of ordination over the last couple of weeks, I've been asked the question several times. What is an ordination? And taking the time to look throughout Scripture, there have been many times uh, throughout Scripture that folks have been set apart for a purpose, certainly going back to the Old Testament with the priesthood, uh, into the New Testament with elders and deacons and missionaries that are being sent off and, and ministers to, with specific uh, con congregations that they may be um, serving. The fact of the matter is this is an age-old dedication that holds meaning still today. The ordination is the declaration of the church that the person has earned the church's confidence and enjoys the endorsement of the local church. Ordination should not be entered into lightly or quickly. Prayer should be the underlying foundation before this momentous step is taken. God has always called his workers to ministry, and he continues to do so today. God called Abraham, Moses, Peter, and Paul to particular ministries. And in this service, we set aside the candidate, Nathan Benjamin Beard, mm -hmm for special called service to the Lord. I've asked that uh, Dan Brown, who has been a uh, role model for Nathan, a mentor to him, if you would come and, and have a prayer for us. Uh, you can use the microphone right here if you want to. Uh, and I'm gonna ask that he uh, have a prayer just to get our hearts and minds set for the service. Go ahead, Dan, if you would. Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, I wanna just give you all the glory and praise as we recognize Nathan, God, as a as a worker that's being sent out, God. The, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, but he has chose to offer his life as a living sacrifice to you, God. And I just I just wanna praise you for that, Lord. And I want you to protect him and uh, keep him strong against persecution and send him out to the places that, that people are afraid to go, the neighborhoods that people drive past, Lord. I ask you to make give him a heart for the broken people of this world that he can go and bring the light and be the salt of the earth, God. I ask you right now, Lord, to just empower him with the Holy Spirit, God, so that he can be a vessel to be used by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dan. We are glad to have uh, many uh, out-of-town guests and folks that have come, especially today, uh, to be with Nathan. First of all, I'd just like to uh, recognize family uh, who have come. If uh, you are related to Nathan or together with family, could you please stand? Okay. All right. And then other guests that have come from out of town, um, which includes his, uh, his girlfriend and her parents. Uh, okay, so we stand, please. And then other guests who maybe have just come today for the service for, for Nathan that may not be a part of the church here. Would you please stand? Okay, so you can see those that have come to support you, Nathan. Thank you. And then I'm going to ask that the church uh, here, the attendees here at North Citrus Christian Church, if you would please stand as well. And then finally, I'm going to ask Nathan if he would come to the front and uh, take that microphone in front of you. Give you a cheat sheet, okay? Okay, each of you have a bulletin that's there. There's a program inside that bulletin. We are at the section which says examination of the candidate, in which case we're going to be doing some responsive readings. I will read the leader part. When it says congregation, that's your part, okay? So you'll read the congregation part. When it's bolded as candidate, that's his part, okay? Uh, so we'll work through this together. Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, that they are white for harvest. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Therefore, as the Lord of the harvest, send out 
Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? I have heard the call of Christ in the words of Isaiah. I respond, Here I am, send me. Have you, Nathan, prayerfully considered the responsibility of living and preaching the gospel? And have you weighed the work involved in the sacrifices you may be called to make? I have. As a minister, you are called to a higher level of responsibility and integrity than other Christians. Have you seriously considered the high level of integrity, morality, and Christian living to which you are called? I have. And do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, your personal Lord and Savior? I do. You do not enter this ministry alone, but with the help and support of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the great cloud of witnesses in heaven, and the church universal. Church, please repeat these words of faith with me. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, my personal Lord and Savior. Will you, Nathan, strive to build up the church, the body of Christ, to prepare God's people for works of service, to labor for the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God? I will, as God gives me strength. Will you endeavor to live a life of love within your family, and in the community, and so draw others to Christ through your example, as well as by your word. I will make it the purpose of my life to live for Jesus Christ, and I ask for your prayers, and the prayers of this church, to help me in this ministry. Mm -hmm. Will you, members of this Christian assembly, lift up Nathan in your prayers, and support him as he embarks on this ministry as a servant of Christ? We do. And will you, Nathan, strive to encourage the church to lead the lost to a saving relationship with Christ? I will. And will you remain faithful to the teaching of Scripture, God's holy word, sharing the whole counsel of God as you teach in the church and the community at large? I will. Will you follow the leading of God's Holy Spirit with the authority of the local church wherever you may serve, promoting unity in the cause of of Jesus Christ. I will. You all may be seated. You have declared your purpose to give your life in the service of Jesus Christ and you've received the approval of this church. I'm now going to ask the representatives from the church along with elders and ministers will now come lay on hands and pray, setting you apart for this ministry. I'm going to ask that you come over here to just the front, and then we will gather um, around you. Okay, Joe, please join us. Come on up. Just step on up. We'll come around to the side and on his shoulders. Testing. Yes. Joe Caputo uh, is here with us today. He is uh, the preaching minister at Christian Church in the Wildwood, where Nathan spent many of his growing up years and had two internships working with the staff down in uh, Christian Church in the Wildwood in Wikiwachi. And I've asked Joe if uh, you feel free to say a few words before you pray, if you want to do that. And then we're going to ask that Joe have one of our ordination prayers uh, for Nathan today. I know like most of you uh, who know Nathan, so proud of uh, this young man, who he is, and uh, it's easy to look ahead and think of the potential that he has and, uh, and quickly skip over the, the man of God that he truly is today and to think the impact that he's made on many lives already. And uh, Nathan, I'm so proud of you and uh, the way that you've allowed God to mold your life and to make you into the man that you are, uh, the blessing you are to your family, to your friends, uh, to people who 
uh, trips and throughout your school career and ministry already, um, just meeting you on the first time, see you and, uh, and they see Jesus. And uh, I'm just proud to be a part of your life and I always have been. Um, it just seems like a few days ago you were a little boy, uh, you know, running around and uh, just thinking Bryce Harper was all that and uh, thinking about all the things, baseball and sports and, and I know you still do, but but wow, just watching you grow up in the, in the man. I'm prone to get emotional in times like these and, uh, and for good reason. Uh, you're an amazing person and uh, we're here today to not only affirm you, but to let you know that no matter what the days bring, uh, we're here for you. Anytime you pick up that phone and, uh, and we're here to support you, to love you, to guide you and, uh, and to serve alongside of you. So let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, it's just amazing to know the, the heart that you have for your kids in this room. You love us as a Heavenly Father. And God, I thank you for Nathan and for the fact that he was your son, that you loved him long before any of us in this room knew him, especially even his parents. God, that you had a call in his life from the time he was a baby. And that growing up in a, in a home, teaching him the things you have, Jonathan and Kim and Sarah, God, all those who have influenced his life, who have been close to him, God, how he has taken that in and allowed him to mold him, the circumstances that have shaped him, the good times, the hard times. And God, for this moment today, that we can celebrate, that we lift him up to you, to praise you, knowing that you have created just a wonderful son of yours. And God, now as you send him out, I pray that, that you would give him all that he needs, inside and out, by the power of your Holy Spirit. May your word come alive in his life, in a way that influences this world around us. As it already has, God, I know that there are many more stories to be told and adventures to be had in this life. So God, I pray for Nathan. And I thank you for him. Thank you for the impact he's had on my life, for the conversations and the smiles, and, and God, the challenges uh, to, keep, uh, to keep young and to do things that it's just not hard to reflect back on, on the moment that I was on my knee and giving my life to you as a minister. And, uh, and God, I know that uh, times like this are few and far between. So thank you, God, we celebrate and give you praise. In Jesus' name, God, I thank you for this young man. Use him in a mighty way for your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay. Father, we continue our prayers. Father, thank you for Nathan, whose name simply means gift from God. And Benjamin, son of my right hand, Father, thank you that he is being set apart today for the greatest privilege that can ever be given a young man to serve the Almighty God in full-time service as a kingdom worker wherever you may send him, wherever he may go. We know that you will lead the way and he will be by your side. Father, I'm just so grateful today for all the things that we see in our world that we can see some bright spots shining through to make a difference on this side of heaven for all eternity. And Lord, I pray that you watch over him. I pray you watch over his future family, his future ministry. And Lord, the people that you will bring into his path, the people that, that he will touch because your light is shining through him and he is allowing you to be, lead him through the Holy Spirit. Lord, just now, we set aside Nathan, and from this church body here at North Citrus Christian Church, and from Christian Church in the Wildwood, and from others who have been a part of his growing up, from family and friends and people gathered here today, we ordain Nathan as a Christian minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Many of you may not, excuse me. Many of you may not realize that uh, Nathan's uh, step into the Christian ministry has been passed on uh, from his grandfather, who is my dad, who spent uh, 30 years full time in the Christian ministry. And uh, my dad had the privilege of uh, ordaining myself into the Christian ministry over 31 years ago. And when he did, uh, we uh, had a song that my dad sang uh, to me as part of the ordination service, simply entitled, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And through the years, this has been a special song that has carried on. So I'm going to sing the first couple verses as a solo, and then we'll ask you to join in when we get to the, uh, to the final verse, okay? Great is thy faithfulness.
need of a Savior, we need more ministers. Yes. Nathan Benjamin Beard has answered that call. Yes. Amen. You are venturing forth into the most exciting, adventurous journey known to man, the Christian ministry. Mm -hmm. There is no greater joy in this life than watching someone accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and being baptized in the waters of Christian baptism. It's been said that Christian ministry will allow you to experience the highest mountaintops of some of life's greatest joys, but will also lead you into some of the lowest valleys of some of life's toughest sorrows. Nathan, maintain a consistent Christian character that will keep you level-headed throughout your roller coaster ride of emotions. In a world where you can quite honestly get a Christian minister certification online in 15 minutes or less with a credit card for only $25, <laughs> we want you to know that this ordination is so much more than a certificate. It's a lifetime of service. Your track record speaks for itself. All the years growing up in the Christian church, being there to serve in so many different areas. Two internships with the staff of Christian Church in the Wildwood throughout the years. Four years of solid Christian Bible education over at Johnson University, Florida in Kissimmee. Graduating with honors with a Bible major in preaching and church leadership. You have done so much more than just a 15-minute online certification. Mm -hmm. You have earned the right to minister and lead. You have led SGA, the student body, as president your junior and senior year at Johnson University, Florida. And in fact, you were voted the son of Johnson University, Florida, a designation only for one individual your senior year for your leadership quality and your leadership traits by your peers. Ministry is in your blood. You've answered the call to ministry going back to Christ in Youth Conference. And you took a stand to be a full-time kingdom worker. Not knowing exactly what that entailed or what that meant, but knew, knowing that God was placing that call in your life to full-time ministry, and to give your life in service to the living God. Nathan, I charge you to carve out time in your daily schedule to continually renew your personal relationship with God. This personal quiet time is necessary to refuel your spiritual batteries. Satan will work hard in this area to keep you from doing this. He will make you busy he will keep you occupied with so many other things than spending time with God and God alone. You see, ministry is much more than just preparing a message or another lesson. And this intimate time allows you to connect to God and his Holy Spirit through his word and through his instruction. I remember when you were back in elementary school and you were attending a Christian uh, children's church at the church we were attending at the time. And there was a lesson on prayer and how prayer is a two-way communication with God. It's not just talking to him, but it's listening to him as well. And so one night around the dinner table, I ask you to pray. You cupped your fingers together. You closed your eyes as tightly as you could. And then we waited. And there was silence for at least 10 seconds or more. So I spoke up. Nathan... Would you pray for us? And you looked up almost out of frustration and said, I am praying. I'm just listening right now. <laughs> Nathan, keep on listening to the voice of God. And may God's Holy Spirit lead you in his path. Please know that you are being prayed for every day. And God is watching over you. I messaged a couple of your graduating classmates from Johnson University, Florida, and asked them to share some words of wisdom and encouragement for you. Your roommate, your senior year, Joey, never have been able to pronounce his last name, Tusillo, 
says, be ready to take the initiative as you start your years in ministry. Anticipate and listen to the needs of your flock. Always be ready to fill them any way you can. Be sensitive to other people's perspectives and always be understanding. Follow Christ in his example of love and lead in it so the world can see. Also from Michael Wood, your roommate, your freshman year at Johnson University, Florida. Nathan, we were friends all throughout college, and one of the things I'll always remember the best about you is that you are one of the most heavenly-minded guys I know. I can remember several occasions where you'd start a conversation with the words, how's your spiritual life? Or how's your relationship with God? You always wanted to use your day as an opportunity to serve and love your brothers and sisters, but especially to deepen their commitment to God. Don't lose that. In ministry, it's sometimes easy to become more focused on the task you must complete than on the people you serve. It's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day -day of ministry and forget about the purpose. Keep that heavenly focus. You're going to rock this. I can't wait to see how God's going to use you and develop you even further. You're in my prayers. My further charge is for you to live out the truth. Keep your personal character flawless. In a world where you can choose to be anything, be kind. Check your heart and tongue at the door. Stay far away from alcohol, abuse of alcohol and drugs, and sexual temptation. We are encouraged in scripture to avoid all appearances of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5, 22. God will answer your prayers to escape temptation. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able and with the temptation, he will provide a way of escape that you can stand up under it. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Stay far away from all appearances of evil. Get your rest. Take care of your health in every realm, spiritually, physically, emotionally, and socially. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2-5. through 5. Preach clearly so that people can understand. Preach in love so that people may follow. Every opportunity to preach is a golden apple. Words of wisdom coming from God himself. What message has God laid upon your heart to share today? What words need to be said? What words don't need to be said? Pray for the guidance and inspiration of the Holy Spirit as God speaks through you to his people. Take your disappointments to God and not to other Christians, nor home to your family. Make time for your wife and your children. The church you may serve will always be able to find another minister, but your family will not be able to find another husband or another father. Your family needs you, and you need your family. They are far more important than any church responsibilities. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is to play on the floor with your kids. Be a kingdom worker. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Romans 12, 15. There is no room for jealousy in ministry. Develop a mission's heart for those in need of a savior around the world. Ministry in 2020 is defined in so many different ways. It's no longer just serving the traditional church, but rather serving God in the greater community in new and creative ways. Be a servant not a master. Persuasion is more effective than force. Lead by example. The need has never been greater right now for young Christian men to devote themselves to full-time Christian ministry. Christian minister is not a title. It's a privilege with the opportunity to serve as Jesus did. Your role model is not to be a mega preacher, 
or even a respected professor, but only Jesus Christ. I've made it clear to you, Nathan, that you are your own man. God will lead you and direct your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. You'll be given the privilege to marry others, to bury, to counsel, to be by the bedside when birth happens, and to be by the dead si bedside when death occurs. You will work with you struggling with self-esteem, bullying, drug, alcohol, sexual additions, and even suicidal thoughts. You will support many with encouragement by your phone calls, your text, your social media post, YouTube videos. But most importantly, you'll touch people's lives in person with Jesus' love and compassion. Ministry is defined in so many different ways other than just local church ministry. Your opportunities are endless. You have the world at your doorstep. Remember, a ship in the harbor is safe, but that's not what ships were built for. If you believe in Jesus, you are not to spend all of your time in the calm waters just inside the harbor, full of joy, but always tied to the dock. You have to get out past the harbor into the great depths of God and begin to know things for yourself. Begin to have spiritual discernment. That's a quote from Oswald Chambers. In a world that is upside down, we need some level-headed, Bible-believing leaders in our midst. Mm -hmm. You will lead this next generation. Mm -hmm. It's possible that Jesus may return in your lifetime. If so, this old world will need the voice of truth to tell them a different story. And Nathan, you are God's man for the job. Mm -hmm. You have the leadership qualities to lead this generation. Some have dubbed you a quiet leader. At times, that is most effective. In other circumstances, you must speak up and be bold, standing up for the truth. And God has gifted you with that ability as well, with the spiritual gift, I believe, of a prophet. What I see in you is a unique blend of spiritual giftedness that is timely for 2020 and the years to come. Pray for wisdom and for the help of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. Because God will answer those prayers 100% of the time. <clears throat> Story is told of the man and his wife that were in bed on a Sunday morning. The alarm clock goes off. The man reaches over and pushes snooze. The wife kind of looks at him. <clears throat> Ten minutes later, the alarm clock goes off. He reaches over and pushes snooze. She nudges him and says, honey, you need to get up. You need to get ready. Go to church. He says, oh, dear, give me one good reason why I should go to church. She said, well, dear, you are the preacher. <laughs> <laughs> you won't always feel like ministering to people, especially those that are EGRs. Those where extra grace is required. Lord, when discouragement comes, uphold Nathan. In his success, shield him from pride. Let him fear God rather than men. From 2 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, again, these words. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Preach the word in your life and in your message. Each message should be centered on the birth, life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Be prepared. Believe it or not, this starts uh, when you're working in a church on Saturday night. <laughs> you have to prepare yourself and get to bed early so that you'll be at top notch and you'll be fresh on Sunday morning to reach out to the needs of others. Sometimes being prepared means you may be the first at the church, 
and you may be the last to leave. The nature of good ministry, too, is study, where God works mightily through his Holy Spirit as you spend time developing lessons and sermons. But most importantly, develop your own spiritual walk with Jesus. This task takes discipline in season and out of season. Correct. Another term used for this is actually a legal term, which means to cross-examine. Your task is to cross-examine the culture in which we live. God's word never changes, yet our culture is ever-changing and at warp speed. Your challenge is to find new ways to penetrate the culture with the truth of God's word. Rebuke. This command involves confronting moral sin. Integrity must be at the center of everything you do. Rebuke yourself first, and then you can clearly see to steer others in the right direction. Encourage. It's your responsibility to encourage the church and to urge her on towards faithfulness. With great patience and careful instruction, this will be a lifetime pursuit from here to eternity. If not you, then who? If not here, then where? If not now, then when? This is biblical ministry, patterned after the life of Jesus Christ. You are called to this ministry. And now, now is the time for your journey to begin. May God bless you, my son. Many favorite songs in the hymnal that have been sung, and many of you have favorite songs as well. I can only speak from kind of my experience growing up, and as Nathan's uh, grandfather on my side, and my dad, and his grandmother on my side, and my mom, her favorite song was the song we're getting ready to sing, which is The Solid Rock. On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. And this is for you that are sitting out here. Where do you stand in your own personal relationship with Jesus Christ? And it's an opportunity for you, first of all, to take a look at that. Take a look at the biblical instruction that God gives us in Scripture and to give you an opportunity to come to know Him on a personal level. And we're going to sing this song as our invitation hymn. If you have a decision to make, if you want to give your life to Christ and you want to learn more about that, what it means to... Uh, to believe and to repent, to confess, to be baptized, to live faithfully for him, then we encourage you to take that step forward. Perhaps you've already taken those steps. You've already been immersed into Christ. You're already living a faithful life, and you just want to become a part of the church here at North Citrus Christian Church. We give you that opportunity as well uh, to make that decision. Let's be standing as we sing together uh, that first and final verse of the Solid Rock.
And uh, thank you for doing that. And I hope that on an ongoing basis, 24-7, uh, you're in the process of doing that. And certainly as we come together as a church, we get encouragement to go out and do the work of the ministry and the mission that's before us. We do want to uh, invite you um, around uh, 12 noon or so. We're going to be gathering for those who would like to stay and who are able to stay uh, for a light lunch. We've got some pizza on the way and we've got a huge cake uh, that is out there to uh, celebrate Nathan's ordina uh, ordination. Uh, so uh, if you can stay, we encourage you to stay, especially uh, those of us. Now, uh, you can feel free just to mill around here, okay? Uh, but then we'll make our way back to the fellowship hall. And if, uh, if you would, if you're just waiting back there, just kind of take a seat at some of the tables that are there because we do want our uh, guest, out-of-town guest and guests to go first uh, through the line. And then we'll have a time of uh, further time together to help celebrate the Nathan. So take some time to uh, congratulate him as you can. But again, we encourage you to stay and, and be a part of the fellowship time afterwards as well. Let's pray. Father, two words come from my mouth, and that is thank you. Lord, I realize that this is God at work in the life of your people. Father, I, I think back to when Kim and I sat down and talked about the possibilities of having children if we wanted to bring children into this crazy world in which we live. We prayed about it and we decided that, you know what? Better to bring them into this world to try to make a change in this world and for there to be light in the world than just to accept it as it is and do nothing about it. Father, thank you for the blessings of Sarah and the blessings of Nathan to do just that. Lord, we celebrate you and we celebrate your son, Jesus Christ. But today we also lift up Nathan and his journey forward. And we give you praise and glory and honor. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Join with me on the final course of Greatest Thy Faithfulness. And then we'll uh, spend some time together and eventually head back home.